Hello and welcome back to Banner Saga. We can't spend time, we can't rest, we have to move on. We have to keep pressing on. A couple of scouts rush into town as you prepare to leave. They're closer than we thought, who shouts. It's like the dredge don't need sleep. The fear in the man's voice courses through the fighters and clansmen. In two steps you near him, backhandling him to the ground. You turn them and face the caravan. Men try to act strong for their families while the ox bleed nervously. Speed and luck are your only hopes to outpace the dredge and make it to Manahar. We won't be stopping for anything, you shall. Rest included, this is what we call a death march. But what if we are attacked, the book asked. The wounded will need rest. You shake your head. We will be attacked, you say. The wounded die or make it to Manahar. That's as simple as it gets. But her words make you consider a caravan. Move out and leave the fighting to those who know how. The caravan responds to the command without complaint. You even see a few smiling at you as if you've done something good by just getting them moving. Stupid humans. From over hill, dredge emerge arm armed. Let me and Fyodor handle this lot, Spar says before casting violently. Keep going. We know where to find you, and we all know the danger we're in, so don't go getting soft and sentimental on me. Fossils say they might not care for fight. Keep moving. Maybe sleep careful moves. The dredge cautiously watch you and the humans walk by, but they do not engage. When you are well past the group, everyone around you start cheering and telling their versions of what just happened. There's too many of them both work, both Kyles. Too far to go. We've got to stop for rest. She stumbled over. Your own signs burn as you go air. The rest of the command is now better. A deep vibration fills the air. Unsettling you. It's coming from within your mind. The stone singer. Shut him up! What's it doing, Valka? Zephyr's head is turned, trying to make out the complicated sound. I, I can't be certain. Something about the location, but there's more. He's begging, but for peace or to be safe, I don't know. Let him sound. The humming vibration continues, more dread appear, the stone singer's song feels more intense, more desperate. You grow a warning, someone to dread but stay back, but others advance. Will we help we helped you, you then That's why I have trust issues. We helped you, you then yokes. Need someone heavy to the armor. <coughs> Sorry. Seriously, the what you, you little ass. Hold this fine dredge the park while the caravan can go. Pass him down. <laughs> if we can get through, this is all. That is that for so Thank you. Him. Oh god damn it. It's you. You asshole. Wait, what? You happy? His song stripped armor from the dredge. He's helping. Okay. I'm sorry that I insulted you a couple of times.
the tempest. And you lose the tempest guy. Wait, 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 wait. Why wasn't he hit? Because we. Same field as If I can hit him once. Can we do the piece again? I 
don't think anyone's been hurt, injured twice. Maybe Folka. No. The stone singer falls to the ground, drain of the ability to even stand. Zephyr stops you from approaching him. He was calling to the others to leave this place, she said. They paid him no heed, so he did what he could to help us. It cost him. He is as frail as a child now. You snort and signal for everyone to keep moving. Zephyr and a few others place the stone singer back on the cart. The caravan is tiring, but so far still marching. I had to dredge our clan down the crevice. Enough of being chased by these fans, don't know theirs! The man takes off towards Crips on his own. Attempt to scare the, dr the dredge. A kill provides enough of a distraction to keep the dredge occupied while everyone is on. Glad I, glad I never crossed him! Volka says, briefly admiring the man's fearless battery, but thanks at some dredge holding back into the crevice. He didn't die. God damn it! The ravens are making good time despite growing tired. And uh, through this pass, you say, and keep your heads down. Suddenly, snow rocks roll down a hill in front of you. That's no coincidence, you say, trying to find Dredge pressing in. Uh, well, I guess it's not much sure what to say. Blue. Sure. You did pay off. Ten percent try. <laughs> we'll try to resist them. Okay, this one goes to be. We have to clear those ones behind us. How am I supposed to do that? Clear those rocks now. Oh. Then, no, again. I keep messing up. One picking. If we don't clear this fan eyes away, the caravan can get, can't get through. Oh, well, but I can't get through anyway. Dick, there's an endless sea of fridge coming at us.
death room. To the right. He can stand. like a retry. Wait, there's some... Oh! Maybe he used to stay alive.
en rocks en stone hard man. You see the dull blades of glow and fang. Your own blood drips on them. So this is where it ends. Wait for the trash to kill you like the others. A yolk scream fills the air. At Dredge got too close. The yolk spoon bellows cart vouchers through the force of Dredge, knocking them back. It charges blindly and blows through the rocks, blocking the path. The cart takes a beating but mends back to its original shape and the ravens rally through the opening. Just get to the old fort and we can rest there. You can almost make out the old fort in the distance, but there's open land between you and it. Oddly, the dredge seems to have flown away. Some ravens begin to roll and tripping over their own feet with exhaustion. Krummer, the old vow leader, speaks up. This reminds me of the ambush I've sprung until tailing. The craziest chieftain of many ever fought. His fighters were all strung up and tired like us. One small trick would have been our ambush, but lucky for us, they never figured it out. What are you getting at? Ah, never mind the details. Let me take some fighters to handle the situation. Don't make me regret it. You're too young to have regrets, Krummer says. I've had only two in my life. One was sleeping too close to the fire in a great hall after eating eggs for 12 days straight. I'll tell you the same to another time. A dozen fighters take off with the war leader and disappear over a hill. to make a final stand. I bring us to the old fort. A human bridge that should have crumpled a hundred years ago. We need water and sleep. People help us, don't attack them. <coughs> Shield wall, you say, or think you say, but it hinders your other fort. Moon thumbs up as a large group of humans support from the buildings near the old fort. A small stout man leads them. Mercenaries, eh? You can look for a dab like a long coin. You reach for your axes, but a few spearmen make it clear you shouldn't. Easy. The last thing we need is to spill each other's blood before the dark wall of the dredge gets their chance, eh? Dredge. The word echoes in your head. They don't know what they're doing. One makes a face and even four her head enough to squint at you. Well, we're charged with keeping the sprout open for the clans that went to Arborang, the man says, so we know we're going to be killing as many of those dredge as we can. Threats and commands come to mind, but never make it out of your mouth. The march, the fighting, the lack of sleep, all catch up with you and you fall to a knee. You try to catch yourself, but graciously, your head hits the snow. Sensing you're being watched, you leap to your feet and wait for Claw and Fag, but they're missing. You roar in anger. The short man by the entrance takes a step back. Easy, Bulwark. No one's trying to harm you. You get to your feet, head pounding. Where are ravens? You ask. I woke you first, but the others need to get up too. I let you sleep as long as I dared, but we're almost out of time. He motions to a safe table and you find your axes undamaged. Who are, who are you and what do you want? My name's Hadr, but that will make in a few hours. The man says, We came from Ark Acre. We were the rear guard of the clan's army and that went to challenge the king in Arborang. If I've seen Hedia, then what do you want from me? Well, I'm in no battle. I'm no battle leader. I'm just a skirmisher like all the rest here. I'm proud of myself for not running off already. 
plain and simple. You know how to fight, so tell us what to do and we'll do it. We've got fighters who could use some tips of, or encouragement. Maybe we could build some stake walls with parts of buildings. Up to you, but don't ask me. Don't have time to do much, and no one's expecting miracles. Regardless, of regardless of how this plays out, I'm glad you stumbled in here when you did. Stepping out into the cold air refreshes you. You look around and are surprised to see stragglers crossing the bridge. Can't believe it, can you? Kramer says. Walking among the dozen fighters in front of him. One of these days, all of you will realize there's only one thing tougher than an old war, lead war leader on a mission. The rivers aren't really tired, but happy to have made it. You grab a handful of snow and squeeze it in your fist until a tickle of fresh water, water across the ground. A silent tribute to the ravens who didn't make it. The fighters, men and women from Akur and a few other northern war towns, watch you as you approach. Show me your shield wall, you bark. Only a few of them move and raise their shields to charge them, sending terrified humans running or skittling across the ground. Scared or faint undisciplined, you shout. Either way, you will be dead in the first assault. Shield wall! This time, everyone runs to lock shields in place with their shoulders. It's too big through, but it's a better effort. Polka and a few older ravens join you to correct stances and swings, but it's the arrival of classmen from Bindle that surprises you. You never had to get you never had to get us this far, but you did. Time for us to pitch in, hopefully won't muck everything up. You show the new volunteers how to reinforce a shield wall. After an hour you tell everyone to rest and get ready for the real fighting in private full class. Think it will make a difference? They're making us dead, so it already has. Sometimes you impress me, Foka says. Just when I think you want everything, you say something that shows you haven't given up on all the rest of us. You grunt and walk away. And we can't rest. The shield maiden tightens strap on her armor while glaring at you with red rimmed eyes. If you got something to say, say it. We'll be dead before long. We don't have to be. We could leave right now. Whoever's after us would roll through here without slowing, be cut in open. Then we can leave that damn cart here. Let the dredge have it. I gave an oath to An oath isn't worth all our fair lives. And go where? Anywhere! Arborang! Did you forget Boris Guard? Arborang will be twice as bad. Then southeast! Maybe we'll find Horseborn, or we can take a long ship west across the vast! You stare at her, having seen desperation in fighters like this plenty of times. The ravens can't outrun this dredge again, and I won't see them starve on a boat or worse. We make our stand here. It will be our last stand. Then so be it. Volka clenches her jaw, her eyes water. What would you do if the person you fought for is was no longer the same? I'm trying to figure out what's happening to me. You said yourself you will be dead soon. Well, what have you come up with? There's a voice in my head, growing louder. I've been fighting to keep it quiet. Bellower's voice, probably. But Belor's dead, his body is asleep. I think the arrow keeps him that way. Vulcan notes, the conclusion doesn't seem too far-fetched for her. These dreams are things he's seen. The Volca did something to betray him. They were walking with the Sandor? I think so, but this has more to do with Iwind and Juno. They did something, something bad. I don't even think Zephyr knows what they did. The two of you look over at Zephyr, the Valka stirs the fire, lost in thought. So, what does all of this mean? It means... I don't know. I figured as much. Still, it feels better knowing I'm the only one in the dark. You look up at the sharp contrast between the constant sunshine and the black wall. <laughs> I guess we'll be in the dark soon enough. A scout's horn signals all fighters to the bridge. 
if we make it through this, someone in my heart is going to answer to me. You storm off to the fighting building raid with each step. The immense city of the Dread Force standing just across the bridge is both terrifying and monstrous. The droning sounds shake the ground up, and you wonder if the old fort can withstand it. Fear is strong in the air. You faintly hear some humans running away, but you wave and stand firm against the impossible odds. You grant yourself a moment of prayer for that. Suddenly, the tall wall of Dread Wars begin to move. Oh, you're arrested. I'll give you a promotion. You deserve it. The characters match the shield against a single adjacent target, target and all adjacent units turns off for they break down from the force of the attack. Without her shield, she loses her passive ability. Shield must you. Yeah, to to be. As shielded as possible. And take this. Is that Nicholas? But he's dead. Be fooled, that isn't Nichols, but Iris. Yeah, what she said. Um, wait. Uh, it would be useful if I knew how they can work. You are last, so I'll put Coca in front of you. Oh, right. What is he doing? Mm, Let's give it to him. Be next. Oh, it's not that he that he can move however he wants. Okay. This one will be next. I don't want to be over here, maybe. This one of the uh, tones. I don't want to know breaking. I'll start breaking them. Well, could have killed him, but... Should have moved because now he's blocked. Port uh, ahead and do it to. Yeah. 
because he can do some serious damage. Keep eating away his shield. We don't want to kill him. This guy is holding his hand. I could have let him rest. That's an idea as well. Forgot about that. Thank you. 
kind of get it. I just need to get rid of. Oh. I just need to get rid of it, but it's. I just gonna keep on appearing out of nowhere. Okay. She'll just resurrect something. I guess I will. Alice falls to the ground. Suddenly, the chaotic sounds of battle quieted and the surrounding dread woman went as in shock. A group of dread guards break through the crowd and begin lifting Alice's body. They don't see her anymore. The Sunder is still alive. There is a chance to finish Alice's food and a few others in order to risk charging the dredge. There is no telling what will happen if she's allowed to recover. But I feel a pang of sadness at the thought of killing her. While they're stunned, move to Manahar! While Alice is carried back into her ranks, wounded are dragged back toward the town. Close your muscles as you take the reins of the ox pulling the lover's guard. Thousands of eyes watch you, the scared faces of so many dredge left on the battlefield pulling at you. Your mind fills with images of a wind on the tower, of dredge twisting, warping in darkness, shaking, slobbering, roaring, a fight in control of your mind. The dredge begin moving south along the river, not as an army, but as people feeling danger. Many of them start crossing the old fort bridge. Bolverk, Volka shouts, take the cart, go to Malahar, we'll hold them here as long as we can. The shield maiden's voice clears your head for a moment. You see her turning proudly, commanding maidens into formation, and grim 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 to lead the classroom of Arboran. She looks back at you, holding her hands. We'll be right behind you, go! Then she joins the shield wall, lending strength to those around her. Bolverk, Volka Zephyr says, pulling your attention from the raging banner near the bridge. We must leave now. The Valka, their metal and cause this. All of it, you rub at the pain in your chest. Zeph flinches at the look in your eyes, but you fall, forget her and begin marching toward one of her, toward vengeance. Chapter 14 Brothers Fight in Kingship Stain.
Seems like everyone's headed for the capital these days. Move the address Baker says. I figure it's just as well as us to, to stay put. We've got enough around here to survive, even if they keep cutting off trade. You're testing and browsing and only half listening to the man when he comes up. The Baker, unaccustomed to Ralph, falls quiet and backs up. The capital's only a few days away now. I know, I'd like to believe we'll make it without any more problems, but... That hasn't been our luck. No sense thinking things will change now. You laugh a little, but notice the distant look in Hagen's eyes as he looks toward the four old hands. I wonder what the old kings like Frost and Screaming would do in my place. They would have kept their people alive, same as you. I just lost half of my people in the old world. It's like Ivor told me, you can't prepare for a giant serpent attacking. Not even Asian kings could do that. Just keep them alive. No matter what happens, Arboran, protect your people. Hakon looks at you, the confusion leaving his face. Let's get what we need and get going. Maybe it'll be as easy as you make it sound. Give the Val an encouraging smile. It's the best you can do. And that's gonna be it for today. It was a long way. For now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!